Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. You know, there is a large percentage of people that call themselves Christians and they have aligned with, they are operating in the spirit of the Antichrist. And uh, we're going to talk about that today. Let's pray and get into this. Father, we love you today. We're so thankful for Jesus. We're thankful for our salvation, for the blood that was shed. Hallelujah. We're thankful for the word of God. Help us today to, to believe it, Lord, and each and every word, literally, just like you said, and be faithful to teach it and to bring honor and glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. So Satan is the God of this world. He's the prince of the power of the air. He is the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. He has an agenda. And if you look around in this world, you can see his agenda being absolutely manifested uh, in everything. You see this world being conformed into the image of the devil. And this spirit of Antichrist, who John told us was all, there were many Antichrists, and this spirit of Antichrist was already in the world. And that spirit has an agenda. That a spirit has a playbook. There is a strong delusion today. And unfortunately, being saved does not offer you immunity from being deceived. You can be saved and born again and deceived. There are those that are deceiving and being deceived, and they're saved. <laughs> and that's sad. And that's sad. And you know why? Because they don't know their Bible. That's just it. Listen, ignorance of the Bible is ignorance of Christ. You're only going to know him to the extent you know his word. And you're only going to know this word to the extent that you believe it. When you come to this word with an evil heart of unbelief, and you don't take literally and understand and respect and tremble at that each and every word, and try to rewrite it in your own mind and get your own twist on it, <laughs> you're going to be off in the weeds. Amen. So the spirit of Antichrist, what does the spirit of Antichrist do? All right. When the Antichrist comes, think about this. The Antichrist's agenda, his main mission, what's he do? All right. Revelation chapter 16. Verse 12. All right. <clears throat> and the sixth angel poured out his vial <clears throat> upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles. Now, okay, here's the agenda. This is the final event. The culmination of all the Antichrist has set out to do. All the devil is doing during the tribulation. Here it is. What do they do? Which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And we already know if you study the Bible at all. We've got Gog and Magog coming down. You've got the Islamic nations coming down. And where's everybody going? Well, duh. <laughs> the Valley of Armageddon. They're surrounding the nation of Israel. The Antichrist's main objective <laughs> in the tribulation is to destroy one nation, one people, God's elect chosen people. Israel. That's the game plan. 
And you look at the world today, and the, everybody's fallen in line with this spirit. Everybody's fallen in line with the Antichrist mindset, the strong delusion. They will believe a lie and be damned in the last and evil days when all the world comes against tiny little Israel. Amen? All right. So, God made some promises to the nation of Israel. And if you are a Bible believer, you need to be aware and you need to know that. Go to Jeremiah chapter 33. We're going to read a little bit of scripture here, but we want to get it all, all right? So, hey, turn up your attention span, put your patience pants on for a minute, and listen to the Word of God. Let me get a drink, and uh, hey, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And you know what that means? <laughs> there will be no peace until the Prince of Peace returns and takes the throne of David. His feet shall stand that day on the Mount of Olives, and he shall restore Israel, and he will bring peace to the earth. So when you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, amen, you're pray praying for the King of the Jews to return and take his rightful seat. All right. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 33, I'm going to read verses 4 through 26. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies of men whom I have slain in my anger and in my fury, and for all whose wickedness I have hid my face from this city. You know, God's been mad at his chosen nation many times. <laughs> Look, I hear people saying, you know, well, Israel, they don't believe in Jesus, and look, look, they're, they're, they're wicked. And what, hey, listen, Israel... How many times in the Old Testament did Israel depart from God and go after Baal and they were chastised and he brought them back? Depart from God and go after, go after idols and other gods and he chastised them and he brought them back. Listen, this is nothing new. This is, this is the pattern. This is how God deals with the nation of Israel. Hey, okay, amen. Verse six, behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Yes, he will. <laughs> yes, he will. He's going to. Amen. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return, and will build them as at the first. Oh, yes, he will. <laughs> yes, he will. <laughs> and I will cleanse them from their iniquity. Hasn't happened yet. Hasn't it's hey, it's been paid for, but they haven't received it yet. Amen. Whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. Same pattern with Israel. They've gone, they've gone off, they've gone off in the wrong direction. Chastisement comes and God brings them back. That's what the tribulation's for. Huh? Chastise Israel, bring them back. Huh? And that's what's going to happen. And uh, that's, that is when he will cleanse them from their iniquity. Amen. Uh, he will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against him. And it, shall, and it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. Israel. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I proclaim unto it. Thus saith the Lord God, Again, there shall be heard in this place, which ye say shall be desolate without man and without beasts. Huh? There was somebody else back then saying, God's all done with the nation of Israel. 
<laughs> he said, which you say. <laughs> but hey, no, <laughs> again, there shall be heard in this place, which you say shall be desolate without a man and beast, even in the cities of Judah, even in the streets of Jerusalem. This isn't allegorical. This isn't spiritual. This isn't figurative. <laughs> that are desolate without man, without inhabitant, without beast. The voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever, and of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land, of the land. He's specific about this. How dare you not believe that? As at the first, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Again, in this place, <laughs> this ain't spiritual. This ain't figurative. <laughs> this isn't allegorical. He <laughs> said, again, in this place, which is desolate, without man, and without beast, and in all the cities thereof, shall be an inhabitation of shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down in the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the vale, in the cities of the south, in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, in the cities of Judah, shall the flocks pass under again the hands of him that telleth them, saith the Lord. They be counting sheep. <laughs> Amen. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. They come in. Believe him. <laughs> that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. He going to do it. Yes, he is. <laughs> Verse 15. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. Amen. He's coming. He going to set his, his feet land in the land on the Mount of Olives. He shall take his throne on the seat of David. He shall rule and reign for a thousand years with a rod of iron. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just like he said. Just like he said. And in those days shall Judah be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherein she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. For thus saith the Lord, okay, now why, listen to God double down on this and speaking to those people that say, which ye say, which ye say. Oh, yeah? Okay. Here's what God says. <laughs> For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, all right? You ready for this? If you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should not be day and night in their seasons, okay? <laughs> if you can make day and night stop, all right? Then what? <laughs> then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant. And we just read all about what that covenant was. Amen? that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites and the priests, my ministers, as the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sands of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Considerest thou not what this people have spoken? Here we go again. What ye say? <laughs> here's, what, here's, here's what the people say. Huh? And in this day and age, this is what the spirit of the Antichrist is saying. This is what a lot of Christians are saying. Saying that, saying, the two families which the Lord hath chosen, Judah and Israel, he hath even cast them off. See? That's, that's what the people were saying then. That's what they're saying now. And that's the lie of the devil. That's the spirit of Antichrist. That's the spirit of this age. Considerest thou not what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord hath chosen, he hath even cast them off. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. Thus saith the Lord, 
if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and of David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And that's exactly, that is exactly what Paul doubles down on in the book of Romans. You say, well, that was, that was, that was, uh, that was old, say that was Old Testament. That was, that was figuratively, allegorically, spiritually fulfilled in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. No. Paul doubles down over here. We're Romans 11. Verse 25. <laughs> you think that, you're ignorant. <laughs> you think that everything was allegorical and spiritual and figurative. You're ignorant. And what does Paul say? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant. It's not an insult. It just means you lack something in knowledge. You just don't know. And what you don't know, you don't know the book. Or you don't believe it. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until what? Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. He is coming. That's what the tribulation is about. The restoration of the land of Israel. The fulfillment of all the kingdom prophecies. Amen. Verse 27, for this is my covenant unto them. When I shall take away their sins. When is that? That's when he comes. Amen. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. They don't believe the gospel right now. But as touching the election, as far as there being the elect of God is chosen people and in an unconditional covenant, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Now, if you ain't going to believe Jeremiah, believe Paul. Amen. For what? For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. He ain't taking it back. This is an immutable, unconditional, eternal promise and covenant with his people that he specifically, specifically doubles down on over and over and over and over again. And that's why Paul said, I wouldn't have you be ignorant. And if you don't know that or you don't believe that, that's just ignorance of the word of God. Pure ignorance of the word of God. You've chosen the spirit of this age and the spirit of the Antichrist over the very living words of the living God. Amen? See, and that's the kind of theology, this replacement theology, this covenant theology, this spiritualizing, making everything allegory, making everything figurative. That, that, that's the kind of theology you get from an NIV. That, that, there's the fruit of your NIV, RSV, ESV. There's the fruit. Of all your watered down corrupt Bibles, you got watered down corrupt theology where what? You're just not believing what God said anymore. And listen, God's not done with Israel. And you better watch how you treat them. You better watch how you treat them. Look how people in the tribulation, all the nations, look how they're judged. By how they treat God's people, the nation of Israel. Look in uh, Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 31, 31 through 40. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, amen, huh? Mount of Olives, throne of David, in Jerusalem, amen, rule and reign, rule and reign the world for a thousand years with the rod of iron. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered, what? All nations. Now I want you to be 
very clear about one thing. Numbers 23 and 9 says, and Israel shall not be numbered among the nations. Israel special. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And I, I don't think he's separating nations. I think he's talking about the people in that nations. So as all the Gentiles, all the nations come before him, this is, this is how those people who come through the tribulation are going to be judged. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, one by one. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. And he goes on down, and he says, uh, uh, naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw, saw we thee hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty? And gave thee drink? When saw we a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or, or when saw we sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king answered, and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done unto the least of these, Who? My brethren. My brethren. Hey, he is the son of David. He is the king of Israel. He is the Messiah of Israel. He's talking about how they treated his brethren, how the nations treated the nation of Israel. For as much as I say unto you, as much as you have done unto, unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. Then he's going to say to them on his left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his Angels. Well, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, a question between heaven and hell at the end of the tribulation, as the millennium is being set up, and as all those people from all the Gentile nations are gathered before him, before the Lord Jesus Christ on the throne of David in Jerusalem, and they're gonna be judged on how they treated his people, Israel. It's a serious thing. Now, if you're a Christian, you don't have to be in that judgment, right? Because you're in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is raptured out of here, the gathering together unto him before the tribulation can begin. Because that's the end of the church age. And then we go into the tribulation, completely different thing. Church age is over. Body of Christ is out of here. Now, if you are a Christian, you're in the body of Christ, you're, you've already been past your judgment at this point. Your judgment is the judgment seat of Christ. Amen? And at the judgment seat of Christ, we're all going to stand before him. You know, and, 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 and every single one of us, our works shall be tried as by fire, the gold, silver, and precious stone, or wood, hay, and stubble. And they said in that day, many shall suffer loss. And it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. The judgment seat of Christ, it's not a party. It's a very sober, serious event. You walking through that fire, with your whole with your whole Christian life in your hand. And you're going to see how much you've got left when you get through the other side. And if you have been living your life 
deceived in the strong delusion, not believing God's Bible, not believing God's book, not standing up for, for the nation of Israel, not rightly dividing your Bible, not, not being involved in church, uh, often some nonsense uh, uh, replacement theology, uh, 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 covenant theology, Bible denying. Uh, if you have been, if you have been in that whole mob of the end times apostate Laodicean lukewarm church that has not stood by the book, go have it. Your hands are going to be empty. Oh, you'll be saved. You, but but that's your quality. The quality of your eternal life is going to be dependent upon what's left when you come through that fire at the judgment seat of Christ. See, that's what he talked about. You know, some there's many, the crowns, you know. So you won't have any of those crowns. Those crowns are earned. You won't, listen, you won't have your millennial inheritance. He says, I'll, I'll make one Lord over one city. I'll make one Lord over ten cities. I'm here to tell you, hell's going to be worse for some people. And heaven's going to be better for some people. And it's all about what we do right here in this life as far as the Christian is concerned. What you do for the Lord is laying up treasures in heaven. <laughs> the story is told of uh, the story. The line of people get ready to go into heaven. The pearly gates. And as they come in, they're getting the keys. Streets of gold. I've got, I got, they got mansions. Amen. <laughs> Many mansions. And as they're coming in, and guy gets a key to his mansion. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's palatial. It's beautiful. Next guy gets the keys to the mansion. Gorgeous, palatial. It's beautiful. And then this next guy, he comes up and they take him over <laughs> and he's got a little pup tent. And he goes, What's this? I got, they all got mansions. I got a pup tent. You know what they told him? They did, we did the best we could with what you sent us. You're sending it ahead. For the judgment seat of Christ, you're sending it ahead. Your reward is yet to come. This has to do with salvation. This has to do with service. This has to do with reward. This has to do with the qu quality of your eternity. Hey, even the disciples, they were some special. huh? Out of the twelve, Peter, James, and John were just a little closer to the Lord. And out, of, and, and out of Peter, James, and John, John, he was just a little closer. See, heaven's going to be like that too. And how close you want to get to the Lord for your eternity? That depends. That depends. And some of it depends right now on you believing what he says in his words about Israel and understanding that they might be your enemies right now for the gospel's sake. But they are beloved for the Father's sake, and they all will be saved. And so when, when it comes to, there's only two sides. There's the Antichrist side that wants to destroy Israel. And if you're a Christian and a Bible believer, you need to be 100% behind, behind these God's people and recognize that you love who God loves, and you love what God loves, and God loves that nation, and God has never given up on that nation. And, and that, that the whole theme of the Bible is, is the coming kingdom. Amen. And, uh, and they have a big part in that. Amen. And, 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 and unless, unless you can stop day and night, <laughs> you, you better recognize God is not going to change his mind. And he's very specific about it. Amen. So, uh, um, that's the thing, man. You can't come to the Bible and say, well, that's just too far out. I don't believe that. So I'm just going to, I think that's all just spiritual. I think that's all just figurative. Uh, I think that's all allegory. I think what I'll make up in my little fantasy, it means this, this, and this. And you don't believe exactly what he said. That's dangerous. That's dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. But I'm telling you, that's what most Christians are doing today. Because what? Being a Christian don't make you immune from being deceived and, be and believing a lie and letting the devil steal 
the quality of your eternal life and your millennial inheritance and your crowns and rewards because you've believed a lie and you have nothing left in your hands when you go through the judgment seat of Christ. We have no excuse. We have no excuse when we stand before him. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know. He said, I gave it all to you right here. And I told you to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I told you to do that. I gave you the book to do that. You had all the information if you'd just been obedient, if you'd just been humble, if you'd just submitted and right, rightly, rightly divided the book, not try to smush it all together and spiritualize it, but rightly divide it and believe every single word. This is Israel. This is the church. This is prophecy. This is mystery. This is the first advent. This is the second advent. This is standing. This is state. And on and on. Rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. And you <laughs> won't be in the armies of the Antichrist, which many Christians today have already signed up. You know, I love you. And we'll see you in the next one.